Hi, Fallon. How are you? I wish I could say I were better. Okay. Well, today we're going to have an extremely difficult conversation. I'm sure it's not going to be easy for you to talk about some of these things that you've been going through in your life over the past few months. But before we get started, I just want to know, are you ready to tell your side of the story? As ready as I will ever be. All right. So then let's do this. Let's go. All right. Audiences met you and your husband, <laughs> Simon Gobadia, for the first time in a recent appearance on Bravo's Real Housewives of Atlanta. Correct. What was that experience like for you? Um, it was definitely an experience. Um, it was a learning one. I don't take anything back, you know. Um, I learned a lot about myself, surprisingly. Okay. Um, and I would just... I would just say it was a very learning experience. I'm happy that I did it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Was this your first time being around a camera crew and having production around you? Um, not necessarily around a camera crew. I started acting when I was nine, so no. Um, as far as reality TV goes, yes, that was the first time. And that was, that was a doozy because it's like everybody knows the rules to a game. And I didn't. So I kind of just had to play by ear and just jump in. You know, I've heard that a lot about reality television. I hear yeah. that people either come on there, come on these shows, and they act like their most authentic self. And then nine times out of ten, they eventually get kicked off the show. Or they know how to play this chess-like game where they get really good at it. Yes. And it keeps them around. Yeah, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fair. Listen, it takes... I always say it takes a very eccentric person to be on reality TV, and yeah. good and bad. I mean, you have to be a little all over the place. So if that's not the avenue for you, that's okay. Yeah. It makes you, you know, maybe you're not crazy. Crazy yeah. enough to be part of it, right? <laughs> maybe. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after watching you on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, do you feel like there's any part of you that we didn't get to see? Maybe something we don't know about yourself. Um, yeah, I am a mother of three boys, 14, 13, and 8. Um, I'm an artist. I love to paint. I am a spiritual gangster, um, and I am a philanthropist. Um, everything I do is to inspire those women in need. Wow. All right. I like that spiritual gangster. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very much so. Well, last time we spoke, you told me that Bravo has been knocking on your door for the past few seasons uh, to be a part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, and I'm sure everyone else is too, what made season 13 different? Um, you know, actually Simon convinced me to do the show um, as a test to my spiritual growth. He believed that I were strong enough at that time to be able to handle, you know, whatever it is that reality TV may throw at me. Um, and I believed him. I, you know, I had faith in what my husband saw in me that we don't necessarily see within ourselves sometimes. Um, and I took his word for it and I said, fuck it, let's do it. That's interesting that he thought that would be good for your spiritual growth to join a reality TV show. <laughs> I guess I've never really thought about it like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it was just a... I think what he was trying to tell me was that it was more of a test. And it tested me, for sure. <laughs> I think we all saw that. Yeah. All right. Well, you also spoke to me about the fact that production came into your home. It wasn't what you thought. You sort of, and I hope it's okay if I'm saying this, but you sort of felt slightly used. If you're all right with this, can you elaborate on that? Um. Yeah, I remember telling the producer specifically what it was that I did not want to happen um, in my home when filming in my home. Outside of my house, you know, it's a reality show, it's fine. But when being in my home, you know, where my children lay their heads, I just ask for a little bit of respect and, you know, I just feel as though when I say I felt used... 
What had transpired was everything that I told them in confidence to not happen, happened. Then when it did happen and I reacted in the way that I did um, due to being called a racial slur in my home several times, um, I had learned after the show aired that someone had said that I was just too, um, I don't know the right term to use for it, but I pretty much did not have the look the show wanted for their show. Okay, so that's interesting to me because at the time that you were a part of the show, you were still very much married to Simon. You still are, but you were married in a relationship, living together. Right. You had everything that you need to be on the show. So why now? What could make you look off-brand for The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Um, I think it was just because of the way that I reacted during the Halloween episode. Um, I wasn't, I didn't care at that point. I wasn't going to tolerate someone uh, calling me something such as, you know, what she did, um, regardless of the situation, you know, regardless of whether there's cameras or not. I didn't care at that point. Um, and I kind of let it slide a few times. The public did not get to see that part, you know, so. Um, and, yeah, I got the call stating when I was actually going to sign on again for another season. But when I didn't get the call, I had asked a friend of mine um, who's close with the production, you know, what's going on? And uh, they said that they did not like how I reacted and that I damaged the image of the show. Has production seen the past 12 seasons before this 13th season? Because (laughs) you grabbing a golf club and running through your house is not the worst thing that's been on the show. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going off of what I was told. You know, um, this did not come straight from Bravo. So I can't can't say whether or not it's true. But um, I will say that it was kind of, it came from a reliable source and it, it was kind of like a slap in the face, so that's why I say I felt used. You also said that you were called a racial slur, which can clearly be uncomfortable for anyone. This is the first time I've heard about this, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to ask you, but if it's okay, may I ask what that was? Uh, Ching Chong. She called me Ching Chong. Wow. More than once. I just, you know... Which is gross. Yeah. Um, My children, what people did not know is that my children were, their balcony is right above, you know, right where we were filming at, outside, because we were filming late. And um, they were gone all day, but filming ran over, and so they came home. And, um, yeah, they heard everything. And... They heard someone calling you Ching Chong. They heard it. I didn't know at that very moment. I, at that point, I was just trying to defend my home. But yes, they did hear what was going on. They saw everything. Yeah. Right. Well, that's disgusting. And I'm yeah. sorry that you had to go through that. Um, it sounds like most of your experience on the show was kind of negative. Oh, <laughs> by far. And it got worse. <laughs> well, now... I guess what my next question would be is, how did the show impact your life? Was it in more of a positive way or a negative? I wouldn't say either or. I just feel like it was just a learning experience. That's all I can say. You know, when I always say that if you're not learning, then you're dead. You know, so I I take the good with the bad and I keep it moving. Right. All right, well, I want to move on to some of the tougher questions that we have. I mean, it's not going to be easy, obviously, but your divorce made headlines this past month, and that was due to the controversy that was surrounding your husband's new engagement to another cast member of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Portia. You're obviously very aware. May I ask, how did you find out about that? I found out at the same time as everyone else. 
I did not know. As a matter of fact, I remember receiving a phone call um, around 8 a.m. that morning when everything started making headlines. And um, someone said to me, you know, Simon and Portia, they're engaged. They're engaged. And I remember arguing with them. And I specifically said, no, my husband is a lot of things, but he would never do that to me. That's, is, that is just not who he is. No, no, no. And they said, are you sure? Because this is what everyone is saying. I said, I don't give a shit what everyone else is saying. He wouldn't do that. But he did. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't think it was possible for him to do that. But then once you found out, obviously, that was the case, were you mad? Were you sad? I mean, what was that emotion for you, the raw emotion, what you felt when it was confirmed? Um, everyone has their own way to deal with pain. And my husband is hurting just as much as I am. But this, this took, um, this, this took the cake. It, it hurt. I was just, that's the best way I can describe it. I was, I was in pain. I've never liked that expression, took the cake, and I really don't like it now that it's in this emotional moment. Yeah. I think I want to ask on behalf of everyone who's been reading the headlines about your divorce, there's been so many comments to you, DMs to you, DMs to Portia. I mean, and people are expecting you, fans are expecting you to act or react a certain way. I guess one of the burning questions that I was talking about earlier is, do you blame Portia for your divorce? <laughs> no. No one has that power over my life, my husband's life, and our marriage. No. However, um, Simon and I were the ones who were married to one another. We're the ones who created a family together. Um, and built a life with one another. I blame the both of us. He is to blame. I am to blame. And that is all. Okay. Whatever came after that, I'm not saying it was right. I'm not even saying it was wrong. Um, but no. No one has that power besides Simon and I. Okay. Well, moving forward, you know, speaking of Simon, a lot of people might assume that due to the combination of Simon's wealth and his age, that you may or may not have been in that marriage for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I'm sure you're no stranger to hearing this. Right. Right. So what would you say to anyone who feels that way? <laughs> well, um, my prenup would highly suggest otherwise. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Prenup, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So with the prenup, you had a very real marriage. You have yes. a blended family. Yes. You have beautiful children that you share, yes. right? He has his own and then you have your own children. Right. What was the dynamic like in your marriage? Um, <laughs> outside of our children, Simon and I, we, I didn't like to travel as much. Simon loves to travel. Um, he was trying to warm me up to traveling. I hate it. I actually hate flying, so. Um, even private? Yeah, even private. I actually hate private even more because it's shaky and it's scary. Um, I, I hate shopping. I hate clothes. I hate the thought of designer clothes, too. God, they're expensive. I just, I'm trying. I really am, but I hate shopping. I hate shoes, bags. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to match it and keep it all together. It, I mean, oh, but Simon loved getting me those things. You know, that was, I feel like that was his love language. Where, you. Right. Whereas mine is quality time, you know, so I didn't necessarily care for any of that. And I think that's what he loved the most about our marriage. Um, 
And then outside of that, and there's the kids and, you know, constantly getting, coming up with new ideas, of what to do with them and new activities. I'm going to miss that the most. Were you home most of the time, for the most part, with the kids? Yeah. I was a stay-at-home mom. So this was a huge part of your life? Yeah. Okay. Well, if I may ask, this might be hard for you to answer, but what changed? Um, everything started to change. I mean, listen... Marriages are not easy, you know, point me to the best marriage that you can think of that you know, and I'll point you to 10 people who have something negative to say about it. Marriages are hard work. Um, So within our marriage, it was hard work. Where it changed, I'm not exactly sure. because Simon is the one that filed. Um, But it mostly started to change. Where I noticed it started changing um, was after the show, after we started filming the show. I don't think it was the show's fault or anything. um, But, I mean, we weren't even on there like that, you know, for the show to be the ruin of our marriage. But... I don't know. It seems as though other things were going on that I didn't necessarily know about, so. Okay. I'm still kind of lost on that part. I don't necessarily have the answers. Well, there are a few people, and when I say a few people, I mean everyone is so divided when it comes to your marriage, especially with the controversy that does surround it with your husband's new engagement. But fans were speculating that you may have been cheating on Simon. Mm. So I just want to ask you, is there any truth to that? No, I never cheated on my husband. Do you feel like Simon may have ever cheated on you? <laughs> um, you know, I'll say this. Simon and I are not new to couples therapy Um, and during one of our therapy sessions I will never forget it he I've never forgotten it actually (laughs) Um, the therapist had asked him have you ever cheated on Fallon would you ever cheat on Fallon she was just going down this line of you know cheating and being unfaithful and his response was only this Simon doesn't get caught unless Simon wants to be caught And those words have stuck with me ever since. Wow. Yeah, that would be burned into not only my heart, but my mind, too. I would always be thinking, if you go to work, are you actually at work? Where are you? That that can't be a comfortable feeling. No. When it came to my marriage, like most women, I was very tenacious. Um, I worked hard damn hard to keep my marriage and um yeah well you said that Simon said if Simon wants to get caught then he'll get caught right but there is speculation that if Simon was in fact cheating on you that he may have been cheating with his new fiance Portia Mm. do you think that there could be any truth to that I don't know who I was married to. I can't. I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's fair. I mean, if you if you don't actually have the timeline, it makes sense. All right. Because you could easily come on here and come off a certain way and accuse, point fingers. That's not what you're doing. So you're just saying, I simply don't know. Right. I and I don't. Um it all just sucks. <laughs> it all just sucks. It hurts. Right. Well, I'm sorry, but we're not done just yet. 
I have a few more questions to ask you, and I just want to get down to the nitty gritty, you know. You and Simon, you were married for a year and a half. So when news broke of your divorce, everyone was like, no, they were only together for a year and a half. It's not even that long. She couldn't keep her man. They were saying all kinds of things. And yeah. you're not a stranger to this. You've seen everything, right. right? But for anyone who wants to know, how long were you guys actually together? Because it's not like you met on day one. Actually, at this point with his new engagement, maybe you did meet on day one and then you're engaged and you know married. But how long for you and Simon... Were you actually together? We were together for five years. Um, we did take a nine-month break in between that time. Um, when we got back together, he proposed twice in the course of five years. Um, when we did get back together the second time, we picked up, I mean, we picked up right where we left off and... We got married three months later, and yeah, I mean, we still had our issues to work out, but we were going to therapy, um, individual therapy, couples therapy. Um, we, I was meditating. He was doing his own form of meditation, and I thought, I really thought that I knew my husband, and I. I knew where, I had a plan, you know? I had a plan for our family and where we were going. And, you know, things got a little bumpy and it wasn't the first time we experienced some bumps. Um, and when it did, I don't know, it just, it, it's just like he gave up. It's like he gave up. I just want to point out the fact that I can always tell when you're serious because you have one eyebrow that raises up, and you're just. Why do people always point out my eyebrow? Because it's it's great. It just shows how ser you're serious, and the eyebrow raises. I am. But you know, you did say that you worked damn hard, and you emphasized on that. You worked damn hard for your marriage. I did. But now looking back, can you say, "I Fallon"? In my heart of hearts, did everything that I could to save my marriage? Or do you look back and you're like, well, maybe I could have done this a little bit differently. Maybe I did this wrong. No. I believe I did the best that I could. Um, I did. I can go down the list of all the things that I tried you know, to make sure that my husband was happy and that I was happy at the same time. Yeah, that's important too. Right. Um, and that the children were happy. Women, we hold a lot of responsibility. We we hold a lot. And I don't I don't even think I, I came up for air until until Simon and I had separated. Right. Well that actually leads me into my next question. We know that you found out through your attorney that Simon filed in January. But was that actually the last time you spoke or even saw him? Um, no. Um, in January, Simon and I were still going to couples counseling. We were... Um, We were working on our marriage, and we, you know, we went back and forth, back and forth. I think I said in an interview uh, before that we were going through our shit, you know. We were just going back and forth, back and forth, and ups, downs, and betweens. I didn't think we were going to, we were on the verge of getting divorced. Um, I was just talking to Simon maybe the day before I got the call, the night before. I had said good night to him. He wasn't home. Uh, he hadn't been home for about two months. But I had just said good night to him, and we had a good uh, conversation about working on our marriage. And the next morning, I'm having my coffee. I'm sipping my coffee, looking at the bees outside of my closet window. And 
um, I get a phone call from my attorney stating that Simon had filed for divorce and that we needed to discuss my prenup. I told him, I, I, whoa, I, I've never even looked at my prenup. You know, I looked at it before we got married, yes, but we got married like two days later after I signed. I didn't even care about the prenup. I just did it because it made Simon comfortable. Right. Uh, so I, I said, I'm not, no, let me talk to Simon. What are you talking about? So he's like, it's okay, you know, talk to Simon, you know, take some time. And I called Simon immediately. I was distraught. I was, I was broken. Did he answer? Yes, he answered. Um, and I said, what is this about my attorney telling me that you filed for divorce? He said, oh, I filed like a month ago and I reneged on it, you know, we're um, going through a rough patch, and I really thought that, I really thought that, you know, it was the end, and um, I'll, I'll call off the dogs right now. I'll call my attorney. I'll call off the dogs. And as to my knowledge, he did, because I didn't hear anything from my attorney. Um, and at some point in time, I don't even remember when, um, I don't know. I just went through the divorce at some point. Okay. Well, fans are also speculating that Simon and Portia's new engagement, which again, you're very aware of, that the timeline is a little off because they said that they were together for about one month before he popped the question to her. And obviously you wouldn't have all of those details. And I'm not trying to, you know, continue to throw salt in the wound, right? But for you... He filed for divorce, then he said, I'm calling off the dogs, and then from there, you thought you were going to go to therapy, you took vacations together, so this seems like you were sort of in limbo for a little bit in your relationship. When did you 100% know we're going forward with the divorce? I think after... I think after everything happened... Um, in the media, <laughs> listen, there was one thing, there's a few things that people are, I think they forget. Um, one, it's that going th a, through a divorce is already hard enough. Um, two, having to go through that divorce publicly. And then three, for my husband to get engaged to a castmate of mine um, whom I had in my home it's all just all of these things and then the last thing is you know the children that's involved there's all of these different emotions and all of these different things I can't even remember when I, f I truly found out about us going through with the divorce. I, it's all just a big blur um, of pain. I've had to go to psychiatrists, therapists, um, even just taking a break from social media. I, I've tried to do everything. Um, I've picked up meditation very heavily, even more than I did before. Um, This is not something that I was prepared for to happen in my life. And not just, I don't really, I know I'm strong. I know I can, I know I'll be fine. And I'll get through it. I always do. It's just the kids, you know, our boys. Right. They know exactly who this woman is. And I'm not there, you know, to console them. I'm not. I feel like they might be confused. I'm not there because I can't see them. And, and I can't hold them. But God, 
got the balls on him. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is obviously very tough. Yeah. You know, us women, we, when we become wives, we know how to dedicate our lives to our husbands. And that's what I did. Even before we were married, he was my husband. And those were your kids. And they were mine. No. And to go from one night and them being mine and being their mommy and now I'm just not. Like it never happened. If we weren't in the middle of a global pandemic, I would get up and hug you right now. <laughs> it's okay, I'm wearing white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a laugh out of you. <laughs> well, we're almost done. Yeah. But I do want to ask you, you know, you mentioned earlier that Simon convinced you to join the Real Housewives of Atlanta, right? Yeah. Do you resent the fact that he convinced you to not only join but then is now engaged to another cast member? Would it matter if it was any other woman? Or does it sting more just knowing that you had this woman in your home? She met your family. She swam in your pool. I mean, do you resent that? He convinced you to join a show, and now he's engaged to another one of the cast members. Um... I meant what I said when I took my vows. And I meant what I said when I told Simon that I loved him unconditionally. And if he's happy, then I don't care. Okay. I don't care how. You know, if my husband is happy, then it's okay. It hurts. It hurts like hell. But. I have to applaud you for even saying that. Just because I know there's so many people out there right now who want to see that reaction from you, that angry reaction where you just lash out they want to see that you hate this woman they want to see that you hate your husband they want all of these negative things to come from you because that's the reaction that they're expecting and that's not the reaction you're giving us so i seriously have to applaud that no um i'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason and my uh my knight in shining armor is out there, and hopefully he'll come in due time <laughs> when That's... I'm healed and ready, but I don't care. I love Simon unconditionally, and I just want him to be happy. Hey, listen, I know that this doesn't matter, but he's out there. He's half the age, he's double the wallet. <laughs> And twice the heart. So he is out there. This is, <laughs> you have nothing but good coming your way, especially the way that you've handled all uh, of this. I will say, thank you. I will say, I am done with dating rich guys. <laughs> rich, I mean, he was the first, you know, older, not only older, but um, wealthy man I have ever been with. And I think I'm just ready to... Uh, be with somebody who just knows how to respect me and love me back the way I love because I, lo I love hard I love really hard and um you know someone someone better is out there who can respect that and I have to be positive because my children depend on it I agree. 
well, obviously this still stings, right? But yeah. I mean, you're moving forward. You're doing your best. You're being as positive as you can be. Yeah. Is there anything off the top of your head that you can think of that you might miss about your marriage to Simon? Because you, you've oh. made it clear you don't care about the material things. You don't care about the jet. You don't care about the cars, <laughs> which is, you know, a lot of... Everyone loves the jet. Everyone would think, you I know... I oh, that shit. jet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't want to match the bag to the shirt to the... You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not material things. What will you, in fact, miss? Oh, Adam. <laughs> Our family... I'm going to miss our boys and coming up with, they're all so different from one another. So I have to come up with um, different birthday themes each year for all five boys. You, that's a full-time job. In it's hard because we have birthdays year round. It is hard, um, but I'm going to miss it. I'm tucking them in at night. And just, you know, our trips and Christmas, I mean. All of it. Well, I don't want to make you cry anymore. Oh, God, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess let's kind of take a, take a moment and put a positive spin on this. Yeah. Moving forward. What would you say is the most important thing to you? What makes Fallon's heartful? My children, being a mother, um, my spiritual journey. Uh, I'm not done learning yet, you know. It's been hard. It's been a very tough road, but um, it's mine. And um, I'm really looking forward to um, whatever's next, whatever God has in store for me. He has some exciting plans. Yeah, yeah, he does. And one thing I have learned from all of this is to not be so set in a plan because, you know, um, not to be so set in a plan that um, God is the one who's in control. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm ready for whatever's next. Onward and upward. Yeah, up and at them. <laughs> yeah, up and at them. Hey, I like that. Yeah. You know, and don't get upset with me for springing this on you, but when we were talking off camera, out in the lobby, we were talking about the fact that you have some very exciting projects coming up. I do. Can you give us any any little bit of details? Uh -huh. Well, one thing about having a little more free time is there is some positivity to it. I can't give you many details. I just will say that um, a lot of people ask me about my skin, my skin routine, you know, skin care, and I'm finally, finally able to come up with something um, for those people. It's not just for women. It's for men, too. So, Hey, I'll be a tester. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, we have you smiling. We have positive coming our way. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, so there's a lot to look forward to. Everyone's still healthy. Yeah. There's, there's good. There's good coming. There is. With that, I want to ask you, what are you looking forward to most in the future? Um, me. I'm looking forward to me and my own identity. Your own so growth. I, yeah, my own self-growth and what it is that I can provide. Listen, I know what the comments say. I know they all want me to boss up and get this 
really wealthy Rico Suave guy, you know, but... I was rooting for that. You know, yeah. <laughs> sorry to tell you, I am the boss. And I am that Rico Suave guy that I need. And I am excited for that new person to come into my life and to show me exactly what it is that God created me for. Um, it's like rediscovering yourself. It is. It is. We, you mentioned your identity and kind of figuring out, moving forward, what that means to you, for you. With that, do you plan on keeping your name, Fallon Globadia? <laughs> Will you keep the name, or are you just Fallon now, like Cher? What are we doing? <laughs> um, you know, I fought pretty damn hard to keep Globadia. Um, I believed in Simon and our unity, and I wanted it more than anything. But like I said, God has his own plan, and Globadia will not be my name anymore. So then what will your name be? Who are you then? Not saying Globadia is your identity, but then you are Fallon who? My name is Fallon Pina.